Hello, sacred souls. It's Susanna from Alemanic Shaman. What I have here for us tonight is protection from having mirror magic used against us. So this is something from, I think it was about two years ago. Might have been a bit more. I think it was two years ago, roughly. Um, when I was under pretty heavy duty black magic attack. And I had someone invade my home through the mirrors that I had. And I ended up getting rid of any and all mirrors. Actually, I turned them facing outwards so that anything trying to get into my home space would be reflected outwards. And at that time, I saw a few homes were in front of the house. They actually had a mirror on the door or near the door facing outwards. And I realized right away what those people were doing as well. So, um, but aside from that, we usually have a bathroom mirror, right? Usually like the vanity, the, um, um, medicine cabinet usually has a mirror door or there's another mirror in the bathroom. So that is often hard to remove. I had it covered for a while, which ended up making me feel almost depressed because I spent a few months not even looking at my own image. And um, then I researched it a little bit more and asked my spirit guides and I came across a video from uh, or it was a I think it was a documentary about the Smithsonian I believe that had some information about an a very old church where in the wall there was an image of Lucifer and the name written in reverse and then an X put over it to like basically say access denied, right? And the whole idea, same as with the mirror, is that those dark beings, entities, and also like uh, lost souls in a human form who feel they have the right to spy on us to use black magic against us and so on and some of them may be possessed by demons by dark spirits or there might be mind manipulation emotional manipulation and so on right and a lot of that can be in connection with a dark entity um but a lot of those would have to find a way in a portal it way in a portal in so that uh, like a gateway in right and um mirrors i was told could be used that way which like before then i didn't believe and then when a friend or acquaintance warned me that it could be coming in through mirrors i thought okay i better try to do that so after I saw the video and everything like I asked my spirit guides and I did not feel comfortable writing the name Lucifer in reverse on my mirror and I didn't want to see that every day right so um, I wrote access denied plus I actually knew the name of the person that was doing the the biggest like most massive invasion but he was not the only one but um the one that was doing like the worst i wrote his name also in reverse on the mirror and then access denied which is what i did here so i actually found a mirror door from one of those bathroom cabinets that somebody had thrown out so that's what i'm using here and i'm using it sideways simply because it was easier to write on if you want to do this kind of protection for yourself at home, um, 
after this video or you can even pause it or watch it and then do it and then rewatch it and you know um, however you're guided but um, I was guided to write access denied in reverse and if you know know the person or entity or um, dark spirit demon and so on whatever is doing that to you um, that's your decision if you want to put that on too or simply put dark ones or just leave it like this so basically if a mirror is used whatever entity or being would be using the the mirror as a gateway to come from the other side through and this could be astral travel as well to, like for spying so they would be coming through to enter your space at home, your home. Uh, so that's why it has to be written in reverse. And that way they cannot come in. So they see it the right way from the other side, basically, right? So that's why it's written in reverse because they're coming from the other side. So they're seeing it the right way. Now, if you're doing this in your bathroom, like on your bathroom mirror, you can always write it like smaller, one word at the top, one at the bottom, or maybe on the sides down, so that you can still see your, your face <laughs> without having it, you know, broken up by the words, right? But if you can put it somewhere on there, that would be ideal. If you have any protective symbols that you want to add on based on your spiritual practice you can do that too so there could be different ones from different religions spiritual practices and so on right um, I actually have one that at this point I'm not ready to share that so far is my personal one but, you know, some people use sigils, some people use religious symbols from either Christianity, Judaism, or, you know, um, maybe something from uh, Celtic times like Druidic or, you know, and so on and so on. So whatever symbol you have that is for protection, you can also put that on, but the right way, don't reverse that. Because that would be like for you, right? For your protection. You need to see that. Okay. Um, so that was the big one that I was guided to share with you now. So um, then there were a few other little things that I wanted to do. And by the way, when I did it on my bathroom mirror, I wrote with concealer. And I couldn't find my concealer just now. So if you do it at home... If you want to use concealer, I think that would be awesome because you're basically concealing the entry point. Like they can no longer find it. They can no longer enter from there, right? So there's an additional meaning to it, but I'm just using lipstick. But you can use anything that writes on a mirror. Okay, so I then found... Um, a piece of plant matter that had dried it might just actually be I think it might be from a thistle but I'm not sure it could be some thick grass or some other plant fiber that dried up and it, it looks a bit like a rope I find or some cordage but it's open so it's it's already cut like our cords are already cut, which is a really good sign, right? So I don't actually have to cut another one. Um, but I put that there just to reinforce our protection. Um, in the beginning, when I got back into my shamanic practice, um, like three years ago, my third eye was under very heavy attack. And I started wearing... A black stone, I, if I re remember correctly, it's an onyx, I think. I was wearing that on my third eye whenever I was at home. I didn't quite wear it outside the home because it was mainly like 
when I was working and I didn't want to, you know, um, bring that kind of stuff to everyone's attention and so on, right? So at home, I did have the extra protection. So this symbolizes third eye protection and this actually fell down and right onto the area where I was sitting, where I was just getting stuff ready. And I was eating arugula earlier and there was this little sprout in the package where it did this beautiful little twirl, like a turn, but almost like what, what I thought of was like fairies dancing, right? So like pure joy and happiness again, lightheartedness, connection with nature, right? And um, also I just found... I think it was yesterday or two days ago but very recently I found a lucky penny and in Canada they stopped using set one cent coins like pennies uh, a few years ago so they're actually very rare now so that was a very lucky find so our luck is back and um, this is a fuzzy that in the distance looked like a black bird or dark bird with the wings up. And then when I got closer, it looked like um, some big insect was dead. And when I looked even closer, it was a fuzzy that was all like bunched up, twirled up. See, like you can see it's just the way it, it bunched up is all like twisted and in knots so that symbolizes those dark ones it's like they're in knots and all twisted up and we oh yeah actually i should put that one there hold on one sec i don't want the dirt on there so here oh now that i'm putting it there it actually does look like the devil's head with the two horns perfect okay access denied okay um, oh, yes. And earlier in a public washroom, I found this toilet paper roll already kind of squished. The one side was still more intact, but the other side was pretty squished. So that was an additional sign that, you know, there's still a portal net that needs to be like fully closed. So that's what this one symbolizes. And I will probably most likely I'll see how I feel guided during the ceremony but um, I I'm assuming at this point I'll probably cut it with the scissors but we'll see I may see if I can simply squish it but I don't think it'll stay or it may not be necessary but I think it will anyway um, so I think that's it for explanations. I put the wood there just so that you can see it because like this background was reflecting too much. So it was hard to actually see the words written on there. So access denied. Okay. So let's smudge and get the ceremony started. Wow. And that's funny too. I just ate and my stomach was growling just now. So someone is hungry. I think they're hungry for our energy, which they're no longer getting. <laughs> okay. Please cleanse, clear, and renew all of our energies and reconnect us with the pure divine love light energies within us and all around us. <sighs> Let our innocence and purity be restored and transmute anything dark and unhealed and low vibrational that is still within us. Thank you. Dankeschön. All my relations. Okay. Dear Creator, Higher Power, Source and Soul Energy, our Higher Selves, our Higher Spirit Guides of the Light, our ancestors that are in the light, dear Mother Earth, powers of all four directions, powers of the east, powers of the south, powers of the west, powers of the north, 
powers of all four elements, air, earth, fire, and water, please, and all other benevolent powers, forces, spirits, and beings of the universe that are of the light, please join the ceremony and assist the healings, prayers, and protection with all of your powers. Thank you. Please close the circle of protection around us. Thank you. And please assist us with any breaking off black magic, any banishing that needs to be done as a part of the ceremony. Thank you. Danke schön, all my relations. And give me one moment. I was just guided. I needed another stick that I can break. One of those will do. Okay, just one of those. It's like a skewer where I had cut off the tip. That'll be fine. Okay, thank you, our spirit guides. And the divine, of course. Oh, thank you for all the guidance and protection that you constantly help us out with. Thank you for the connection that we have. We feel very grateful to be a part of the team of light workers that are on the path of ascension, that are the pioneers in the ascension process. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. As part of that, you know that many dark ones come at us either with jealousy or just pure hate. Either they, they want to be like us or they just can't stand the thought that someone may seemingly be better than them and we're not judging here but that's in their thinking because they don't realize their own divinity that is buried somewhere deep deep down inside of them and unfortunately they've lost access to it oh thank you so let this ceremony deny them access to ourselves but through that, let them be forced to access their own divinity. Let that be the reversal. So by bouncing back from us, by not having access to us, let them be forced to look at their own divinity. Look at the light that they carry within themselves, even if it's just a tiny little spark that's still there. Help them find it. Light them the way through the darkness. What just popped into my head is that story of Halloween were uh, basically the background story of Jack O'Lantern were Jack, who had tricked the devil um, during his lifetime and made him promise not to ever let him or not, not to ever take his soul and that he would never go to hell. But he was too bad to go to heaven when he passed on. So he, he was destined to wander in darkness in between those realms for all eternity and the devil felt sorry for him and gave him a charcoal in a carved out turnip which then later on developed into jack-o-lantern so that's how i remember the story 
There might be different variations of the story, but the gist is the same anyhow. So that's what just popped into my head. So let us give those dark lost souls a flame, a small candle flame or something equivalent to a jack-o'-lantern or a burning charcoal that gives them enough light so that they can get out of that darkness. Send them that little bit of light to help lift them out of that darkness. And let us be fully and completely disconnected from them. Let the cords be fully and completely cut and remain so. And yes, I <laughs> will cut it. And let the mirror magic that they were still using as a portal to get to us no longer function as such. Let the mirror be a dead end for them. That just makes them bounce back to themselves. Access denied. They no longer have access to us and our light. So they are now bound to be, to deal with their, and sit in their own darkness, which is why we will send them light. Okay, actually, oh, it's interesting. It's actually two layers, and even that comes apart. Look at that. Even the walls of that come apart. Wow. Okay, and I'm feeling guided to light another um, tea light candle for them. And let's put that in a little container. Oh, actually, I have an idea. Okay, um, so I actually have a Tibetan singing bowl and I was just guided to, I hope it won't really change the sound, but it's actually just been sitting there. It, it's um, one of the cheaper ones and the sound is not as good as like, you know, the most ex more expensive ones would be, but... So let, let healing sounds and music and light come into their lives, into the lives of those dark lost souls and show them the way back to their own divinity, show them their way back to themselves and let any and all black magic they've used that also kept them stuck as well as us let that be now and forever broken and removed from all of our lives our energy fields and all aspects that it affected and let uh, all aspects of our lives be restored and bring back good luck, joy, laughter, lightheartedness, um, a spiritual connection through the third eye and being free, feeling free, living 
to the fullest according to our soul's desires and passions and let this egg rattle symbolize our new oops sorry <laughs> our new life of renewed innocence blessings peace love harmony prosperity abun and abundance in all areas of our lives including career and any and all other aspects that I may not be thinking of right now. Let our new life be cradled and strongly protected. And all those dark ones shall no longer have access to us. Especially not through any mirrors that we have in our homes. Access denied, instant karma, and love and light to them. And so it is. And their energies shall be returned to sender simply so that they can sit in their own energies and finally go within and learn with the healing sounds and the light to finally learn to appreciate themselves to first heal the self-hate that shall then slowly develop into self-love and acceptance self-respect and embracing themselves for who they are and we shall be free on to be on our continued healing and ascension journey fully and completely stepping into our power loving and accepting and respecting ourselves exactly for who we are and recognizing and claiming our full power now and forever and leaving behind and actually healing sorry healing and reintegrating any and all proverbial skeletons that we may still have in our closets let them come out to be faced and healed and released released through transmutation and healing and through that they can be integrated into our repertoire of experiences and memories that help help us become or helped us become who we are oh. and so it is thank you danke schön all my relations oh. Okay, I actually want to quickly share this with you as well. I have one of those rugs that is woven from um, leftover rags. I don't know if it's called a rag rug. I can't remember. Um, but the red color, the way it looks, like a whole bunch of... Like a mix between skulls and jack-o'-lanterns, but like they're more red but it looks like they have eyes and a nose and they're round a whole bunch of round heads with like big eyes and noses like for like openings so that's actually very interesting ah thank you yes so it it's the things that have still haunted our soul. Some other dark souls that have haunted our soul for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. That shall now be completed and be done and finished. And come to an absolute end to no longer continue. 
So we shall be healed with this. Any and all soul contracts with those dark, disturbed souls shall be finished and released. We bless all those dark ones with love. Thank them for the lessons they have taught us. We thank them for the growth that it triggered us to do within our to grow within ourselves to grow emotionally and heal work on our own healing and we release them from our lives freeing all of us for all eternity and so it is thank you danke schön all my relations <sighs> We are now fully protected. Um, oh, it's a little bit low. Sorry, let me move this a bit lower. Ah, here we go. Sorry, it was a little bit too high. My apologies. I was so focused on the ceremony, I didn't notice. Okay, now you see the whole picture. And I was just guided to add the safety glasses on there because we now have safety. And so it is. Thank you so much, our spirit team, our spirit guides, the divine. Please accept our love, thanks, gratitude, and blessings, and let the ceremony now be finished. Please open the circle of protection around us, but keep us strongly safe, shielded, and protected. And so it is. Thank you. Danke schön, all my relations, all our relations. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for watching, for being a part of the ceremony, and for being on your own healing and ascension journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe, and I'm also sending you tons of love, light, and blessings. Be well until next time. Bye! And I wish you great abundance. <laughs> I can't remember if I said that. Okay, bye!